I recently acquired this 486 motherboard. Sadly, it has succumbed to corrosion from the battery, which has leaked its chemicals everywhere, all over the motherboard, completely rendering it unusable. This is going to be a multi-part series, where I attempt to repair this motherboard to working condition. At the moment, I only own the motherboard itself, no other components, so I can't really test it. But what I'm going to do today is attempt to repair some of the traces which have been damaged by the battery. So let's get started. One of the first things I like to do when repairing traces on a motherboard like this is to first give it a good clean with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 100% here, so it's very strong and doesn't have much water which means it'll evaporate quickly and will do a very good job at cleaning up the leftover battery acid. You can see here that I'm just using a toothbrush to do this. This will work fine and don't hesitate either because we need to get rid of all that battery corrosion. You see all that white stuff that was built up around the ISO slots? That is what we use the toothbrush for, to remove all of that grime and acid and just make the motherboard look fresh again. I'm also going to be using a multimeter set in continuity mode so that way I can actually test the traces themselves because sometimes while traces may look corroded they are actually fine and don't need to be repaired at all. With that in mind we can now start testing traces that may look corroded. As you can see here while this trace may appear to look like it won't work at all. If I get my multimeter just right so I can make a good contact with the trace, you can actually see that it's still good. So just bear that in mind. Traces that look bad are actually fine sometimes. But then other times they're completely terrible too. I was really quite surprised how many traces were actually fine. I mean, this battery did some serious damage to this motherboard, but a lot of the traces, which I suspected would need to be repaired, were actually fine, completely. So that means there's a lot less work that'll have to be done on my part, and there's also a much higher chance that it'll work again. Well, I finally found a bad trace. As you can see here, it was pretty damn corroded and it really didn't look like it was going to work and this was one of those occasions where it didn't work. So now it's time to repair it. So what I started off by doing was soldering a single strand of wire to the point where the trace starts. Now we're basically going to put this single strand of wire along the path that the trace was originally and then I'm going to super glue it in place using the tiniest bit just to hold it in place so it doesn't short anything else on the board. I ran that single strand of wire to the other point where it needs to go and now it's time to just check that our trace that we put there is connecting both of the pins where the old trace has failed. And yeah, it seems to be connecting perfectly. My multimeter was making beeping sounds, which indicates that there is continuity. So now what I'm going to do is solder in the other side. I've already done the first side, which is on the left hand side, and now I'm soldering in the right hand side of the wire where it meets the connector. So this will just ensure that it stays in place and it won't go anywhere. So just to make sure that we don't have any bridging between traces with our new wire installed, what I'm going to do is make sure that it's not touching any other metal points and then I'm going to super glue it in place so that way it won't ever touch anything else. The reason I only used single strands of wire to do this repair was because I wanted it to be as low profile and minimalistic as possible. And when it's done right, it actually works perfect. So there's no need to worry about bridging continuity because I super glued it in place and it's not going anywhere. 
it was really fiddly, so I didn't manage to get any footage of it, but I made sure that it wasn't touching anything, and I actually held it in place manually until the super glue was hard enough to keep it in place. I also let it dry overnight, just to ensure that it wasn't going anywhere, and also to ensure that my repair method was sufficient. I made sure to let the super glue cure overnight, and as you can see here, the repair worked perfect. This is my method of bridging traces, which have been corroded away. I think it turned out really good. It's minimalistic, low profile, and it gets the job done. So that's about it for today. I only repaired one trace because I just wanted to demonstrate my method. So expect to see a follow up in the future where I finish the job off and test it out to see if we got it working. I currently don't own anything other than the motherboard so there's no way I can test it. But once I find the right deal on some parts for this motherboard, I'll be sure to finish off the repair and see if we can get it working again. So that's my basic method to repairing traces on motherboards. I hope you enjoyed this video.